The following KQED production was produced in high definition. Every single bite needed to be savored. (laughs) There's Twinkies in there. Wow. It's like a great big hug in the cold city. I mean, that food is about as spicy as I can handle, and my parents put chili powder in my baby food. Like, (laughs) and I sent French fry bits everywhere, all over the table, and just a lot of chewing. And (laughs) okay, my stomach is growling right now. I just want you to know, I'm hungry. Check Please Bay Area is brought to you by the members of KQED and by Charitable Auto Resources, urging you to donate your car to KQED's vehicle donation program to help raise funds for quality public broadcasting. IRG, with thousands of natural stone surfaces, all in stock today. IRG Brisbane, Dublin, or online at marblecompany.com. Locally owned and operated for 24 years, Amici's East Coast Pizzeria serves up a taste of the Northeast's distinctive Italian fare at their 12 Bay Area locations. Open daily for a quick business lunch or an evening meal out with family and friends, Amici's offers homemade pastas, fresh salads, and pizzas cooked in traditional brick ovens with many vegetarian, vegan, and gluten-free options. Menu and locations can be found at amici's.com. Amici's, proud to support KQED. Hi, I'm Leslie Sobracco. Welcome to Check, Please! Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. We have three guests, and each one recommends one of their favorite spots, and the other two go check them out to see what they think. This week, the beard says it all for hairstylist Gary Cabano, who likes to make a big statement. He has his own cutting-edge style and his own razor-sharp wit, along with plenty of opinions on dining destinations. An airline pilot, Beth Graver, flies in the face of gravity to land her perfect (laughs) meal. She's ready to take off at a moment's notice to dine at her or any other chosen spot. But first, Administrator Brian Cummings' calm demeanor disappears when faced with food and drink. He becomes dogmatic, funny, animated, and flails his arms wildly while dispensing his opinion. But you may ask yourself, Is his place a liquor store or a deli? Hmm, take the plunge. Venture to Valencia Street to find the best sandwiches in town at a place called Ray's Market and Deli. I'm James Choi, owner of Ray's Market and Deli, uh, Mission's favorite Latina. Ray was a mid-aged Korean woman that opened a deli and a shop in the mid 80s. My parents were the third owners that took over and I'm currently the fourth owner of Ray's Deli and Market. So the menu I worked on with uh, one of my friends who's a chef, Ian, who's the owner of a restaurant in the neighborhood called Commonwealth. He was nice enough to take me under his wings and uh, we trained together for about six months on sandwiches, making fresh mayonnaise and picking the right breads and the right sauces for different kind of sandwiches. We get fresh baked Acme organic bread every day. We don't even cut it till uh, a sandwich is ordered. I personally make all of the mayonnaise that goes on every single sandwich that comes here. We make our own kimchi, my mother does. She goes to Korea twice a year, uh, picks up these fresh ground Korean pepper from the first harvest, grown organically, and flies it back, and it's been a local favorite. Even though it was hard in the beginning to overcome stereotypes of bad food in liquor stores, um, we made a menu that we could be proud of, um, and now people are not afraid to eat at our liquor store uh, lunch counter. Okay, Brian, this spot really is a liquor store with kind of a deli tucked behind it, isn't it? How'd you find it? Where I work, we take lunch pretty seriously. It's (laughs) it's an important part of the day. And we like to go out and explore local uh, places to eat. And doing a search for sandwiches, it just kind of popped up. And I saw the photos and I said, this looks like a liquor store. But when you saw the actual sandwiches, they looked amazing. And so uh, I called in a coworker and I said, let's do it. We took sandwiches for about eight people and we figured that either we'd have a great sandwich or the whole office would be poisoned. And yeah, it just, it just the photos looked amazing. Okay, and, so um, what is the sandwich to get? What is the one that hooked you, line and sinker? Uh, the first one I had was the Korean steak sandwich. 
okay. which is a piece of marinated uh, ribeye, mm -hmm. and it's got a soy, ginger, honey consistency, and it's served with pickled jalapenos, uh, pickled onions, and it's got a slice of cheddar cheese on it. Wow, did you have that one? Actually, I had the one with the roasted turkey and Havarti cheese, pickled red onions, avocado, and we had it toasted on a Dutch crunch. It was fantastic. A good sandwich. Really good, really right? good. Didn't even know the place was there, but I know it's there now, and I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> and Beth, what did you have for sandwiches? Um, I myself had the chicken katsu sandwich, and it was just, um, it was a chicken sandwich with panko uh, breadcrumbs. It was cooked perfectly. My three-year-old split it with me and loved it. Um, <laughs> had coleslaw and uh, pickled onions mm -hmm. and jalapenos. It had a spicy aioli um, with a tangy katsu sauce. And the, all the flavors just married together perfectly. But I have to say, I brought six other people with me, so I tried There's everything. There's not enough room in there for six <laughs> people, <laughs> is there? And, right. and <laughs> actually, <laughs> we, they had five. Um, I, I was surprised that it was um, the liquor store, and I was glad we went over the menu previously because um, they had just had a, a delivery, so the menu was blocked, but we all knew what we were going to have. Uh, when we went in, there were only five window seats, but the um, I'm guessing it was the owner yeah. brought out a uh, bench setting for us. So we had mm -hmm. extra seating and it, he was very, very nice and they were very accommodating and brought out our sandwiches to, to us you. because five of us were children. Right. And I so. want to get back to the, the sandwiches because the way they have it, you obviously had one of the, the deli sandwiches, but they have like the street sandwiches right. named mm -hmm. after streets. And then they have the signature sandwiches, which are the katsu like you had and the, and the Korean beef, right? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. There's there's quite a, a variety to choose from, and it's a place I've been to maybe 15, 20 times. Until I went back for the show, I'd only had two sandwiches, right. um, because it was the, the Korean steak, or there's one called the Van S, mm -hmm. which is a... Made after the street, obviously. Yeah. Exactly. Right? Okay. It's a breaded chicken katsu, um, similar, uh, but it's got bacon mm -hmm. and barbecue sauce and cheese on it, and it's another one that on paper sounds completely nuts, right. uh, but is is unbelievably good. So every time I go, I force politely a coworker to share with me. Because um, <laughs> I can't, I need to have both. It's yeah. it's one of those things where, you know, you, you can't just have one. And um, so yeah, recently those were the only ones I've tried. But yeah, they have a lot named after various streets and they've added a lot recently as well. And you've got to get there before two o'clock or you might not get your sandwich, Absolutely. right? You might, you know, they, they run on, out. That's great. We, we got there on a Sunday afternoon about three and the two signature sandwiches were sold out. Oh. But yeah. I wasn't disappointed with what we had and I'll definitely go back. What about value, price? I mean, I think the, the one thing that's, you know, a lot of people are saying a liquor store sandwich, they have Acme bread, they have mm -hmm. really good cheeses, they right. make their own kimchi. It's not, you know, Wonder Bread slapped together, uh, right. you know, um, with, with processed cheese. Um, right. Right. Ingredients are really fresh, and they clearly care about what they're doing, and there's a great consistency amongst the sandwiches. Right. Um, and so the value for, you know, eight, nine dollars is fantastic. They're very filling. Right. Um, and talk about kimchi a little bit, because I saw you shaking your head. The kimchi. Which is the, the kind of cabbage I'm not spicy cabbage crazy about right. kimchi myself, but mm -hmm. my husband is a kimchi connoisseur, and so <laughs> is my mother-in-law. So I um, bought two uh, jars of kimchi. They sell it for $8 a jar, which Their is Their own little, homemade kimchi. Mm -hmm. It is, right. and it's a little pricey, but if you bring the jar back, they'll give you $2 for a refund, so it's great if you live local. The right. kimchi was amazing. All right, the kimchi rules. So. Okay, this is <laughs> your spot, Brian, so wrap it up for us. Yeah, I think it's, um, you know, for those that are adventurous, you know, you can make good decisions or bad decisions in a liquor store, and this is definitely a good decision. Uh, I think it's a great meal. <laughs> okay, and Beth? The subs were fantastic. I would even go out of my way to stop by there and get sandwiches to go. Oh, wow. And Gary? I think it was a great place to stop in, grab a sandwich, go to the ball game, or just enjoy the area for what it is. There's a lot of shops around there. We'll be back for a signature sandwich next All time. All right. If you would like to try Ray's Market in Delhi, it's on Valencia at 19th in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415 282 5255. It's open every day, 11.30 a.m. until 5 p.m., 6 p.m. on weekends. No reservations are accepted. And the average price for a sandwich is around $10. Bringing in the new year or celebrating with the salon staff, Gary's Place stays open late so you can party or dine on American Fair well into the night.
His spot's on golf between Oak and Page in San Francisco, and it's called Sauce. My name is uh, Trip Hosley, and I own Sauce Restaurant in San Francisco, along with my two brothers, Matthew and Nathan, and our chef, Ben Paula, and we serve American comfort food. We decided it was time to go to work for ourselves and uh, scraped up some money and bought the restaurant seven years ago. And uh, just a year and a half ago, we took over the rest of the building and we now have an eight room inn upstairs that we call Sleepover Sauce. So if you have too much to eat, need a place to stay, we can cover you on that as well. We concentrate on what we call social plates or tapas for fat guys. Uh, we're all big guys, we don't like little plates of food, so we don't like the small plate term. Sauce is known for uh, late night dining. We're always here if you're still hungry. Uh, you can come by and get a real meal and a bottle of wine and uh, we'll, we'll feed you if we're here. The bar is definitely a focal point for the restaurant. It's uh, 18 feet of solid redwood and uh, if you come in and sit at the sauce bar long enough, you'll meet everybody in the neighborhood. My name is Ben Paula. I'm chef and co-owner of Sauce Restaurant. So my typical Wednesday is going over to the Civic Center Farmer's Market, talking to all the local guys and seeing what's great pick up bushels of this, cases of that, and plan my specials for the weekend. So here at Sauce, we eat the way I like to eat, socially. You put all the plates in the middle and everyone grabs. Make sure everyone has a great time because then you have three of the ones you like and you pass the other ones off to your friends. So at Sauce, we take the food very seriously and not ourselves and that usually works out pretty well. Now, Gary, you've been going to this spot for quite some time, haven't you? I have. We've been going there about four or five years now. We started on a New Year's Eve. I'm always a little reluctant to go out on New Year's Eve. Um, I've had some bad experiences, but um, I happened to be looking through a restaurant guide and found this restaurant to be open till midnight and decided to give it a try about five years ago, and we've been going back ever since. Um, we typically go there and have small plates that they call social plates and uh, share four or five small plates and get a sort of variety of everything that they have to offer. It's for the most part American food done in a slightly uh, different way, upscale yeah. if you will. Yeah, and what um, did you guys have? Did you have the social plates? What was your... Yeah, we had a large sampling okay. of that. So we had the sliders of the day, mm -hmm. which was an Italian sausage with mozzarella and blue cheese, mm -hmm. uh, which was nice. A uh, little raw on the inside for some of the customers, okay. some of the diners we were with. It kind of I like them bleeding. That. <laughs> yeah. I like them bloody. This was like still emanating noise. It was yeah. very raw. <laughs> so, um, but I, it was a small sandwich, so I you know, naturally tried it and it was quite good. We tried the uh, macaroni and cheese, mm -hmm. which I thought was really good. Um, the potine, mm -hmm. which I quite liked. Um, and I found that all the dishes sounded like they would be very, very heavy and really, you know, but they were actually surprisingly not too salty, pretty well balanced. Did uh, you get the chance to try the portobello mushrooms? I didn't, no. Those are fantastic. Portobello mushroom french fries, mm. which I find very interesting. I've yeah. never okay. seen them anywhere else. And uh, I have those every time I go there. Every time you go. Uh -huh. And what did you have? Because those, did you bring a big group as well to this we one? We did. Um, we're a very foodie family. So we had a, a group of five. I had um, the kids and my father-in-law and my husband with me. We, the portobello fries were delicious. They were amazing. And um, the aioli they had with them just, just made them. I have to say the social plates were... Uh, the best part of this restaurant. Mm -hmm. um, well, besides the drinks, the bartender was amazing. And dessert, <laughs> come on, dessert too, we'll get to dessert. Yeah, we'll get drinks, dessert. certainly drinks is something to talk about, their uh, cocktails. My husband said it was the absolutely best gin and tonic he's ever had and he would drive an hour to drink it wow. again. Well, and uh, the wine list is quite something too. They've got, you know, the, it's a fun, it's small, but it's mm -hmm. chilled and unchilled is sort of mm -hmm. the way they categorize it. So you can get drinks of the day or you can get certainly some nice, well, very well-priced wine under $50 yeah. as well. Actually, I had a cocktail cocktail as well that was kind of interesting. It was uh, bourbon centric. I think the bar was very much. Uh, oh, know, I like you. I'm a bourbon girl. But it was bourbon and lemon rock candy. Nice. Mm. Um, and I just think there's a great degenerate quality about adding candy to bourbon. So I kind of <laughs> respected that bartender a little bit. And it was one of those where one would be good and two would be a serious mistake the next day. So, <laughs> but three would be just right. Yeah, three, yeah, three <laughs> something amazing could happen. You never know. He definitely yeah. made nice sized drinks. Mm -hmm. They yeah. were not yeah. um, for, yeah. the, for the week. Right. Uh, but the, I have to say the tater tots on the social plates 
I would have never ordered tater tots at a nice Sounds restaurant before, yeah. but they were just perfectly done, um, crisp on the outside, and they had this amazing smoked gouda with truffle oil, which everyone knows that I love, yeah. um, sauce that just were amazing. It just seemed like a great uh, place for the social plates and drinks. Um, I had the Hawaiian butter fish. It was uh, wrapped in prosciutto. Mm. The butterfish by itself didn't have much taste, and um, the prosciutto added a little bit of salt, but it was actually too salty with the mm. prosciutto. Yeah. So um, the risotto that accompanied it was pretty good, and um, it had an arugula salad that was tasty, but I wasn't greatly impressed with the entrees. But my father-in-law had the beef roast, and it was braised and cooked perfectly in, in the middle, and I would have never ordered a beef roast to anywhere, but it was really the best I've ever had. Oh, that's fantastic. What about desserts? Because the PBJ. <laughs> I tell people about desserts, you cannot miss their dessert. Their sampler, if you have enough people to relax and enjoy it together, they, they do a peanut butter and jelly on a, a sponge cake with vanilla ice cream inside, and then they sear the outside of the cake, it's fantastic. They make homemade donuts with uh, vanilla bourbon dipping sauce. And, bourbon uh, again? <laughs> we had a peach cobbler there last time, it was fantastic. Did you guys have desserts? Uh, we did, yeah, we had the PB&J, which we thought was great, and they, there was a special cobbler on the menu, which was Bing Cherry and I think uh, Berry. And surprisingly, that one didn't go over very well. Oh. It, 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 um, it sounded great on the page, but mm -hmm. when it arrived, it, it didn't really have good color. It and didn't have bourbon in it. That's the problem. That could be it. That could <laughs> be it. But the PB&J <laughs> was fantastic and really deceptive and really playful. Uh -huh. and I love that they seared the sponge cake. That was, that was a huge hit. All right, this is your restaurant. Gary, wrap it up for us. The people at Sauce take really good care of you, uh, especially Chef Ben. He's willing to alter any of the plates to your liking. Great place to go for a late night after a play or after some live music. All right, Brian. I'd say the food is really good. The portions are huge, so you can get good bang for your buck and you can split an entree and uh, I would go back. All right, and Beth. I think it's a great neighborhood bar, great place for cocktails and the social plates. I wouldn't necessarily go back for dinner, but the desserts were fantastic as well. All right. If you would like to try sauce, it's on Goff between Oak and Page in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-252-1369. It's open for dinner from 5 p.m. until 2 a.m. every night. Reservations are recommended, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $30. A simple tip for pairing food and wine is to think of the textures of both the wine and the dish. For example, if you're serving creamy cheeses, something like brie, you might want to try a creamy and rich Chardonnay. Or if you add a little salsa to that, some fruit salsa or a little chutney, then think Viognier. Viognier is an aromatic grape variety that still has richness and lushness to it, but will kick up the fruit character that you add to that cheese platter. When it comes to hearty dishes, things like soups and stews, think of wines that have a little power to them. Syrah, Cabernet Sauvignon, Grenache. You want those wines to dance with each other and not wrestle with the food. Or better yet, mix and match. Have a tasting party and figure out what you enjoy. Remember, as long as you enjoy the food and the wine, that's the right answer. Cheers. Just off the Sonoma Plaza, this place features a sunny patio, large antique bar, and a menu of country food with a French passion. Beth's ardor for her spot is shared by her husband. Together they frequent this location on West Spain in Sonoma, and it's called The Girl and the Fig. I'm Sandra Bernstein from The Girl and the Fig. I'm actually the girl of The Girl and the Fig in Sonoma, California. The Fig is actually a symbol of my passion, of Sonoma, of the Rome wines that we have on our wine list, of all the people that I get to meet and all of our staff. And it's really about passion and really embracing what we have in our area. I love the idea that the Girl in the Fig can be a meeting place where we get to see our friends and neighbors, our local merchants, our winemakers, and of course we get people that visit from all over the world. I'm John Toolsey. Um, I'm the executive chef at the Girl in the Fig. One of the things that I love is the farm. Our farm is about two acres and we have between 50 and 60 different things planted at any time. And it's really 
our rudder through the seasons. This weekend we picked about 80 pounds of beans, three different types, and now they're on a multitude of plates in all different forms, and they're just amazing. We want folks to feel like, I've had Sonoma, I understand what Sonoma is, I understand the magic of it. I definitely don't want the girl on the fig to be just another meal. I want it to be a memory and something that will last with someone for a really long time. Now Beth, you and your husband went on your first date here, is that we right? We went on our very first date here and um, not only did that make it an amazing restaurant for me, but we go back, um, it's probably first on my list anytime we get a chance to go out. It's, um, it's just an amazing restaurant. There's the outdoor uh, garden area, which mm -hmm. is my favorite place to sit. You can go with a big group of people after wine tasting all day or just an intimate dinner with your husband. And it's both. Um, the food is never disappointing. Mm -hmm. um, the food is always amazing. They have a cheese plate that is wonderful that they pair with their wines. They have a daily plate that they can do the appetizer, entree, and desserts. Right. But I always have to try a little of everything every time I'm there. And do you have a favorite thing that you get every time? I or is do, there... I do. Okay. Uh, we all, I always have to get the steamed mussels. I, said, I should say okay. we because we always have to split them. Uh, and they're uh, pastis uh, lavender with leeks. And I have tried to have steamed mussels at other places, and I still have not found another place that even comes close. Home. All right, I see it. it w what's going on there, Brian? Um, okay. I don't see you flailing your arms. Um, uh, well, <laughs> I mean, there will be. The, yeah, now is when the gesticulation I'm happens. Ha I'm hang um, the wine <laughs> it's it's funny because I, I thought the setting was beautiful, but I do have to take issue with the mussels and the fries. I'd, oh, I'd read okay. a lot about them. And I'm assuming it's just an off night, but when the fries arrived, they were matchstick. The frites. Right. Mm -hmm. But it, it looked as though um, I clearly, you know, made a, someone in the kitchen angry because it looks like they just <laughs> took the fries and kind of whacked them around. So it just, they arrived, they looked like crumpled up kind of chips. Oh, and I, really? And mm -hmm. I, I went to kind of find one that was a good size and I, I couldn't. I went to stick my fork in and I sent french fry bits everywhere all over the table and <laughs> they were just, I mean, unbelievably Too tiny, tiny. to match. I don't know if they all broke off or, right. but yeah, you couldn't dip them in the tarragon was aioli. Was it the flavor or just the, the, the size of the, the fry? Si the size was infuriating. It was oh, like, okay. it was a sense of personal aggravation so came over me. The size does matter, and, I can see. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, the mussels, for instance, there was a, a few mussels that didn't open and I didn't even bother. I was too busy just looking at these fries, yeah. looking around trying to see, was I the only one? Was it you know, trying to make eye contact with someone who's like... <laughs> Did you have the fries, Gary? Was I didn't have the no. fries, but everything we had was just absolutely fantastic. I had the wild flounder. I mm -hmm. thought that was that as well. probably the best I've ever eaten. But the topping did it, and that was a lemon caper browned butter over the top and it was just and did you absolutely have any wine? delicious because they're known for their you know their Rhone style mm. mostly California but some classic like Domaine Tompier some classic Provencal wines but unfortunately I didn't have any wine I was driving about an hour and a half from mm. my home and of course their wine list is spectacular right and what else did you have we had the fig and arugula salad uh, with pancetta that was large enough for the two of us to mm -hmm. split and we had one of the cheese offerings that had three different cheeses, caper berries, uh, olives, uh, salami, and copa. And what Delicious. about you, Brian? So mussels are a no-go. Right, yeah. Frites, you were, you were about ready to light fire to it the frites. Was, yeah, <laughs> I, was, I was ready to upend the table and, you know. Okay, but so, the, but, but. The charcuterie plate was excellent. Okay. Um, the smoked trout salad is actually really, really good. That was one of my favorite okay. things. Um, I had the flounder as well, but I found it to be a little too salty. Really? And there were capers kind of peppered all throughout the plate, which you also had to be conscious of because that would just add to the salt. Yeah. Um, but I thought that the, the food itself is really well prepared, aside from the seasoning, mm -hmm. that it was beautifully cooked and it was well presented, mm -hmm. the, the staff is really good, but uh, every now and again a dish would be a little too salty for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. They just want, to, you, you just need a little they more. They want to push the wine. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. what, about, what about any dessert that you had, in, Beth? That's a well, I have to say that any time I get dessert, I have to have the lavender creme brulee. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing. It's got the, the lavender crust, and it's, it's cooked perfectly with a mint leaf that looks so delicious, you just want to cut it up and add it into there. And then um, the waitress had uh, suggested a wonderful tawny port, 
which was actually less expensive than the one I was planning on getting and was amazing. With that, so always an excellent choice there. It was, and the chocolate caramel salted tort is what my husband had, and the flavors are just incredible with the um, gray sea salt on yeah. top. It that just, it just, you just put a fork in it and the caramel oozes out. And yep. with All right, it's your spot. <laughs> Obviously, you can go on and on about dessert. <laughs> but so tell people besides dessert why they need to go back to. Girl they need the to place. go back because it's a great place for locals. You won't be unimpressed with the food unless you don't particularly like frites. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Brian? I have unfinished business with the restaurant. I mean, uh, it is a bit of a, a trek from San Francisco. Um, the burger looked fantastic. I'd try that again. And I'd like to see if the fries, if that was just a one-off. Um, and so that would be the deciding factor for me. All right. And Gary? I had probably one of the best days I've had in a long time driving to Sonoma. Hadn't done that for quite a while. Great place. I'll definitely go back. All right. If you would like to try the girl in the fig, it's on West Spain, just off the square in Sonoma. The telephone number is 707-938-3634. It's open every day for lunch and dinner. Reservations are recommended, and the average tab per person without drinks is around $45. Well, I want to thank my opinionated guests on this week's show. Brian Cummings, whose adventurous culinary expeditions took us to Ray's Market in Delhi on Valencia, and Gary Cabano on a more traditional journey to sauce on Gough Street, and Beth Graver's country jaunt to the girl and the fig in Sonoma. Don't forget that you can go to our website at kqed.org slash check, please, to add your comments on today's show. You'll find more details on all the restaurants featured, information on the wines we're drinking today, and you can watch or download a segment. You can also stay in touch with us on Facebook and Twitter. So don't forget to join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Cheers. Woohoo! This show is available in high definition, Comcast On Demand, and via podcast. For additional information on the restaurants featured, to comment, or to apply to be on the show, go to our website at kqed.org slash checkplease. Check Please Bay Area is brought to you by the members of KQED and by Amici's East Coast Pizzeria's 12 locations specialize in the delivery of authentic thin crust pizzas, pastas, and salads to Bay Area companies of all sizes. Professional staff deliver one order at a time direct from their kitchens to your business. Whether it's for an important meeting, a thank you for employees, or a quick meal option, Amici's can provide freshly made food for groups from 2 to 2,000. Menu and locations can be found at Amici's.com. Amici's, proud to support KQED. IRG, with thousands of natural stone surfaces, all in stock today. IRG Brisbane, Dublin, or online at marblecompany.com. Charitable Auto Resources, urging you to donate your car to KQED's vehicle donation program to help raise funds for quality public broadcasting. A KQED HD production.